Hello, I'm Yvonne Donetz. I am the host and producer of The Health View and the director and producer of the video Celebrate Nashua. This educational video consists of over 20 interviews with community leaders discussing the many facets of life we're celebrating in Nashua, New Hampshire. Its purpose is to raise awareness, inform, and celebrate the history, people, culture, and arts of Nashua, New Hampshire by weaving together the beautiful and amazing stories of who we are, who we have become, and who we wish to be as we journey together in making Nashua, New Hampshire the very best place to live, work, and play. In addition to the passionate people interviewed in this video, there are many more people, organizations, and businesses who also work together to make Nashua great. I invite you to search for The Health View at youtube.com to learn about a variety of organizations and people who are making a difference, as well as to explore many topics that can support your health and well-being. To learn more about Nashua, watch on Comcast, the Public Access Channel 96, the Education Channel 99, and the Government Channel 16. Become active if you are not already. Visit our beautiful parks and waterways. Read the Telegraph and the Encore magazine. Check out the Nashua and Greater Nashua community calendars. Listen to WSMN, our local radio station, to learn more about our community and what is happening. Visit the Nashua Public Library and the Historical Society. Be a part of Nashua now and be a part of Nashua's future. Hi, I'm Brian McCarthy, President of the Board of Aldermen of Nashua. What should you know about Nashua? With its history deeply rooted in the Industrial Revolution and high technology, Nashua has made the transition from mill town to small 21st century great city. Nashua is a great place to live. Nashua has a diverse housing stock from apartments to condominiums to suburban single family homes at all levels of affordability. Nashua is safe. The first responders of Nashua Fire and Rescue and Nashua Police Department work tirelessly to keep Nashua the safest city in America. Nashua has a health care system that is second to none with Southern New Hampshire Medical Center, St. Joe's Medical Center, and their associated facilities. Access to top-notch health care in Nashua is easy. Nashua is educated. We have two newly built high schools. We have three middle schools, 12 elementary schools. The fact that over 100 of our students are recognized as advanced placement students every year and the number of students who go on to Ivy League educations from Nashua is testament to the great teaching that's done by our teachers and the great condition of our, of our facilities. Nashua works hard. Nashua has, is home to BAE Systems and has dozens of other small companies. With our rich workforce, it is little wonder that the Milliard Technology Park and the Nashua Technology Park are filled with the up-and-comers of Northeast High Technology. But Nashua is not only working hard, Nashua is fun. We have the Silver Knights baseball team at Holman Stadium. Edmund Keefe Auditorium is home to the New Hampshire Symphony. Our downtown boasts over 40 restaurants with casual dining, some of them with outdoor dining in the summertime. Our art scene is vibrant. There are studios. The Riverwalk Cafe provides music events. The Great American Downtown keeps Main Street bustling with events, from a very successful farmer's market to the holiday stroll, a 25-year tradition that brings thousands of people to celebrate the holidays in downtown Nashua every year. We are building a performing arts center downtown to bring world-class culture and entertainment to the city. 
And in the spring every year, our National International Sculpture Symposium brings sculptors from around the world to add to our inventory of public art. Nashua is a great place. Come and visit. Enjoy a meal. Enjoy the arts. Enjoy a ball game. Explore. You may want to stay. My name is Sarah Marchant, and I am the Community Development Division Director for the City of Nashua. In that role, I oversee the building, planning, zoning, code enforcement, urban programs, transportation system, and waterways for the City of Nashua. So we go through the master planning process and work with the community based on community feedback to clearly detail and outline how the community wants to grow in the future and how we want to see ourselves move forward. One of the main aspects of um, community development revolves around land use and specifically um, conservation and conservation land. We've spent an incredible amount of time and effort uh, in the past couple years in really looking at the conservation lands. The Conservation Commission has done an incredible job and has really decided to reinvest in moving some of its land from just simply conserved open space into well-developed, easily usable passive recreation trails. And one of the biggest projects has been the Southwest Trails Project that's located in the southwest quadrant of the city off of um, Gilson Road all the way down um, close to Lovewell's Pond. It's almost four miles of new trails. There's um, some great maps on our website for all of those areas. Some of the other major conservation projects, the acquisition and creation of the rail trail, um, which starts in downtown Nashua off of Main Street and spans all the way down to Will Street area. In addition, we've been assembling parcels and put everything together to expand the rail trail towards the east. We've also secured a grant recently to connect the Heritage Rail Trail to connect that to Mines Falls Park in a new location. And there will be a new pedestrian bridge across the Nashua Canal. And if you connect that loop, it makes almost three miles of quick, easy, passive recreation trails. We've been very happy to work on getting this new pedestrian access across and to really open up downtown's access directly to Mines Falls Park. And we are always working to continue the Riverwalk project. So the Riverwalk project exists now from Margaritas down around, you can see that beautiful cantilevered bridge around Peddler's Daughter and connects to the backside of Riverside Barbecue and down um, off of Front Street towards Cotton Mill Square and um, across the old the Cotton Mill Bridge there. That um, trail has been long envisioned to be continued to go back up towards um, the Parc Renaissance and around Four Water Streets building and to connect to Bicentennial Park and then around the Telegraph building and connect behind the library towards that trail back there to really um, be able to enjoy and bring out our riverfront asset. The city has um, recently acquired one hydroelectric dam and is purchasing another, and so we have full control over the hydroelectric facilities on our waterway by next year. Um, and within that control comes the ability to really regulate our rivers, um, the Nashua Canal, and the water that goes through our community in a way that feeds back into positive green electricity. So community development prides itself on working with the community and being reflective of the community's needs and wants. And public participation is essential to us understanding what the community's needs and wants are as we move forward with public-private partnerships and collaboration for the redevelopment of downtown and all of Nashua as it moves forward and how we would like to see that in the future. We're very much looking forward to kicking off a new master planning process in the next year or two, where community input is essential to us understanding what the vision is for Nashua in the next five, 10, and 20 years from now. And we wanna make sure we continue to preserve what's most important to us and celebrate how we wanna develop in the future as well. Hi, I'm Tim Cummings, and I'm the Director of Economic Development here in the city of Nashua. Nashua is a community of approximately 87,000 uh, individuals during the nighttime. During the daytime, we swell to over 100,000. We are home to a lot of great uh, businesses. The businesses are typically clustered along the highway 
on and off ramps. Most people think of Daniel Webster Highway where we see a strong cluster of retail. We also have some wonderful businesses located off of the corridor on Amherst Street, but we also have the Mill Yard. And near and dear to my heart is downtown. City of Nashua is a great place to live, work, and play, and it's something I like to encourage. I believe economic development has a vision to try to increase the job potential for the area's uh, residents as well as look to enhance the property values in the community. Right now, the community has a value of approximately $8.5 billion. And what we uh, use that value for is, our, uh, is translated into our property taxes, and our property taxes pay for our core services. So that's teachers' salaries, that's collection of trash, or even as much as helping with uh, hazardous waste disposal. So all these different core type of services that our residents come to rely upon is uh, predicated off of the property tax, which uh, comes from the value that the city has. My job being the director of economic development is try to encourage development in the appropriate areas that will help raise the uh, property tax value. My name is Paul Shea and I'm the Executive Director of Great American Downtown here in Nashua. We have a mission centered around economic and cultural vibrancy and building that in the downtown area. Uh, we do that through uh, creative community events uh, and effective marketing. What makes Nashua so special is that we have a group of fantastic people that live here and contribute to making our culture and our way of life here possible. Uh, the downtown area has been and continues to be the center of the community. The downtown area is rich with mill buildings that are now uh, living spaces, uh, and that trend continues with the new development of the uh, Franklin Street property by Brady Sullivan. Now what we're seeing is uh, greater interest in urban living, uh, greater interest in development in the areas that would lend well to that. Downtown Nashua has a great set of shops and restaurants, a lot of great dining opportunities. The downtown area is also very well complemented by uh, a depth of arts organizations. A full uh, range of, of arts represented in our community. Uh, that's something that seems to have been growing in recent years. Uh, we've got a lot of different public art programs that have been developed in recent years. Uh, the Nashua Sculpt International Sculpture Symposium. I can't forget that it's international because that's really what makes it so special. We have a lot of different mural projects that have been developed. Uh, Positive Street Art has done really an unreal amount of work that uh, just it showcases so many talented folks. Uh, we've worked uh, with City Arts, with Positive Street Art, with North Main Music program called the Nashua Street Pianos. If uh, folks go onto Twitter or Instagram and they look up the hashtag Nashua Street Pianos, they'll see all sorts of folks playing. Uh, we also provide an opportunity for the downtown shops and restaurants to express their creativity through our downtown scarecrow competition. Mm -hmm. Last year we had about 25 participants. Uh, folks go online and vote for them, and it, it's a really fun thing. We also work on the Holiday Stroll, and that's another program of ours. Uh, the event usually attracts about 30,000 people to downtown Nashua each year. Um, over uh, 30 organizations there represented. Uh, we also produce the Nashua Farmers Market. Uh, the market, when I came into the organization, uh, was about six to eight vendors, and we've really put a lot of work into that. Um, this season, we are up to 30 vendors and maybe over 35 uh, by the end of the season. We also produce the Taste of Downtown, which features over 30 uh, restaurants set up in shops where folks can come down and sample from all of the great uh, culinary talents that we have here and all of the other great events that are produced by Great American Downtown, folks can go to downtownnashua.org. Uh, we also have released a new community calendar. We're working with over 12 different uh, local organizations that have programming in the downtown area to centralize all of those listings into one place as all of these organizations and groups that have been coming together really hit their stride. I mean, we're there now, but the, I do firmly believe that the next few years are just going to be amazing. And, and when we look back at today and when we look back at all of the, the groups that have been working and, and putting all of this time in, and we think to ourselves, you know, we, we didn't even know exactly where we were headed, but what we've done is just so special. 
and I'm really looking forward to what we do together. Hi, I'm Tracy, and I'm the President and CEO of the Greater Nashua Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce was founded in Nashua in 1926 and originally formed as really a businessman's club uh, designed to connect business leaders and business owners across the community. By the 1990s, the Chamber had grown and its focus had shifted a bit to growing, specifically to growing businesses. They formed the Center for Economic Development, which looked at increasing sales, bringing in new clients, bringing in new customers, and teaching particularly new businesses the business skills needed to be able to be successful. So it was a very hands-on approach to being a Chamber of Commerce. And at the same time, still worked with businesses on building exposure, building their brands, and a hallmark for our chamber since our very beginning, working to advocate for a strong business community, business climate, uh, both regionally and in the state. Today, our vision is for a vibrant, thriving business community, recognized locally throughout the state of New Hampshire and in these days and times, both nationally and internationally, as a wonderful place to live, to grow a family, to start a business, um, and to work. With that vision of what we'd like to see for Nashua, our mission is to serve as a catalyst to make those things happen. And we do that in three ways, through advocacy work, through building connections between and among business leaders and the community and our civic and state leadership uh, and through professional development. What are the skills that businessmen and women, whether they're the owner of a company or an employee in, in a company, what are the skills they need to have today to make their business thrive? We have a young professionals organization, UGO, which is Latin for to connect. And we chose that name specifically because we want to help connect young people with our community, young people with employers, and employers with that target, uh, targeted workforce as well. Our chamber is committed to supporting a thriving arts community, um, a thriving cultural experience to make living and working in Nashua better. We have a strong Indian community here, a historically strong Greek community, Hispanic community, Lithuanians and French Canadians, Portuguese and Brazilian, people from the Dominican Republic. We have people who have lived in Nashua for generations and generations, uh, going back to the founding of our country. Together, we make our community stronger. We are better together. We are stronger together. We advocate more passionately and more completely together. And that ties us as a chamber strongly to our community. As we move forward, that our chamber will continue to be a strong leader and a strong advocate for the greater Nashua community. My name is Michael Kerrigan. I'm the Deputy Chief of Operations for the Nashua Police Department. I proudly serve alongside over 170 men and women officers and 45 civilians who work together every day to keep Nashua rated the safest city in the United States. The Nashua Police Department was accredited through CALEA in 1991, and for the past 25 years we have retained certifications verifying that we, all, we are always professional and strive to follow best police practices. While it's true that the majority of our work is in patrol and driving the streets in uniform and investigating crimes and crime prevention, we also, a lot more, we also offer a lot more to the citizens of Nashua. We strongly believe in our mission to protect people and property uh, through partnerships with our citizens. Because of those partnerships, we listen to what the citizens have for concerns and we develop programming to address those concerns. We call that part of our community policing program. We offer many programs throughout the city of Nashua 
that we hope to alleviate the fears and concerns of different groups. One of these is a Crime Watch program. We currently have over 32 groups that meet quarterly or monthly, depending on the needs, and it entails small groups from each neighborhood getting together to address any concerns that they have. Speeding vehicles, breaking into cars, robberies, drug issues, any topic is valid. We have officers attend these meetings and we, we address the concerns that they have on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then we're able to get back to them and explain to them what we did. Another example is some of the different academies we offer. We offer three throughout the year. A Citizen Academy, which is a uh, once a week, nine, nine week program. We have a Senior Academy and we have a Youth Academy. The Youth Academy is done in conjunction with Nash Rappel, Police Athletic League. Each of these academies offer insight people to come and hear from different parts of the National Police Department and what they do. They'll hear from detectives, they'll hear from the legal bureau, they'll hear from services, professional standards, and the uniform divisions, as well as many of the specialty units we'll talk about after. Recently, we started offering a senior safety class. This class was a five-week program designed specifically for senior citizens to address some of the concerns that they had, whether it be online um, scams, online identity fraud, driving issues, any of those issues that seem to um, be a great concern to the senior citizens, we offered a class on different things that they could do. Another example is the internet safety classes that we do. Parents have a great concern what their kids are viewing online and where they can go and how they can keep their kids safe online and where some of the dangers are. So we developed programming in conjunction with the Secret Service and our computer forensics unit to explain to three different groups of people, the parents, uh, the elementary school kids and middle school kids, different sites that you can go on and what's safe and what's well, not safe and how you should conduct yourself while you're on the internet. It's a good resource for parents to know what their kids are doing and how to keep each other safe. A major, major program that we offered over the past couple of years was the CRAZE class, which is the civilian response to an active shooter event. With everything that's going on throughout the country, in mall shootings, school shootings, we got a lot of concern from citizens that wanted to know what should they do, what should their role, and what to expect if the police uh, were to become involved in the situation or what they could do to help. So we developed the CRAZE class in partnership with other uh, agencies throughout the country, again, to honor best practices and what to do. And we offer this and we take it to the community. We have it at the police station. We will take it to the workplaces. We'll bring it to schools. And we'll explain to uh, parents and children alike what we would expect them to do, some things that they could do to make it easier for them, and some things that they could do to keep everybody safe. We also explain to them what they can expect from the police, how they're going to expect the police to come in, or what they're going to expect them to do, and what's going to happen. It puts them at ease and allows them to answer some questions that they had. Finally, as part of that class, we offer a first aid class, which kind of explains what to do first aid in a uni unique way in an active shooter situation. It's geared more on um, blood stopping and, and trauma saving than it is airway breathing. Another area we have for community policing is our problem-oriented policing unit. It's a small unit of plainclothes officers that works out there and handles specific problems. The last year and a half, they've worked almost exclusively on drug interdiction and drug investigations, given the opioid crisis we've had. Finally, one of the areas that we spend a lot of time in is community conversations with immigrant and minority populations. It's important to the National Police Department to develop relationships and understand the different cultures that we work with and we have living in our city. Once we have that understanding and that, res and that mutual respect between each other, we can effectively communicate with them and their concerns and their issues to help alleviate problems so that everybody is on the same page and we all are aware of what the expectations are from both sides. It's also a way for these groups to get to know the police officers and to de develop a trust and be able to come to us with their problems uh, and feel open and honest and free to do so. So all these community policing programs that we run, and we change and we'll add and we'll subtract some, they're important for us to maintain the relationships that we have in the community and expand upon them and just to develop the trust back and forth. The National Police Department also offers, in addition to all the patrol and detective work and investigative work, we also have uh, many specialty units. Some of these include the Special Weapons and Tactical, the SWAT team. We have a bomb unit, one of two in the state. Uh, we have bicycle and motorcycle units who are out there frequently doing motor vehicle enforcement 
or downtown uh, enforcement with uh, jaywalking issues or uh, red light issues, stop sign issues. Also going around getting to know the business owners and getting to know the different people. We have an underwater recovery unit which works in conjunction with the National Fire and Rescue. Uh, the, our responsibilities are primarily to recover evidence or anything that's in the water after a period of time. We have crisis negotiation units, crime scene units. The National Police Department is fortunate in that we have a lot of resources that we're able to handle our, our own investigations and control all, all the issues that happen in the city. We're also able to provide mutual aid support to some of the surrounding cities. For example, our bomb unit, being one of two in the state, is able to go to different areas in Hollis and Hudson, uh, Limebro, to assist them if they have a suspicious device or a suspicious package. All of these units require training. They're trained through the federal government and they're maintained with equipment from the federal government in order to make NASA safer and have a lot more resources to draw from. One of our newest specialty units that we have is a computer forensics unit. This unit allows us to um, get information and evidence off of cell phones, off of computers, to track online predators, to find out internet uh, abuses, photographs being swapped back and forth on the internet. It's a modern day problem that we've been able and fortunate to develop a unit to handle just such investigations. Our hope is that if we give our people the best training and we give our people the best equipment um, and we hire professional people, the citizens of Nashville will get a top notch police department, which they deserve. Hello, I'm Brian Rhodes. And I'm the chief of Nashville Fire Rescue. I have the privilege of serving as the 14th chief of this great organization. Our mission at National Fire Rescue is to create a safe and vibrant community through risk reduction, preparedness, and a proactive all hazard response plan. We do this with 176 employees who I like to say are ordinary people who do extraordinary things on a daily basis. 172 of our employees are uniformed and four of our civilian staff. Our organization is made up of different divisions. Our fire alarm division is responsible for answering all the 911 calls and also for dispatching all of our apparatus. We have a safety training division that is responsible for training all of our members and making sure our members uh, stay current and safe with all state local and federal training requirements, uh, but they also are very important on emergency scenes as they are, as their title implies, the safety officers. Uh, we also have our fire marshal's office who are responsible for uh, the inspection and safety of all of our multi multifamily commercial occupancies in the city as well as all of our city buildings. Uh, we are members of the Sauhegan Mutual Aid Association, which is a mutual aid association created of 19 communities in the, in the Sauhegan Valley area. Uh, and our primary role with them, and we are the hazardous materials response team. We also have a dive team that works in close collaboration with the Nashville Police Department. In November of 2016, uh, the city of Nashua was, was not unlike many cities in our country, and we were in the throes of an opioid epidemic. Uh, and with great leadership in the city and incredible collaboration throughout the city with many departments, the police department, uh, the mayor's office, both hospitals in our community, uh, AMR ambulance, um, we began the Safe Stations Initiative, which is a program that allows people suffering from opioid addiction to enter into treatment 24 hours a day, seven days a week at any of our seven facilities. Our employees operate out of seven facilities that are strategically located in the city. We just recently completed a $1.5 million renovation in addition to our Spitbrook Road fire station that was built in 1977. Our mechanical division, which is staffed by three full-time mechanics, is responsible for the safety, maintenance, and repair of over 40 vehicles. These repairs and maintenance consist of anything from an oil change to fixing a fire pump on one of the fire pumpers or fixing the aerial on one of the aerial trucks. We take great pride in collaborating with all city departments as we have found when Nashville works together, Nash Nashville works best. 
We also have a very good relationship with our city's emergency medical transport company, American Medical Response. They operate out of a single location, which is near exit five, and that's why our six fire stations are crucially important to the safety of our citizens, because we are strategically located throughout the community. If you would like to learn more about Nashua Fire Rescue, you can visit us at www.nashuafire.com, and you can also follow us on Twitter, at Nashua Fire. We highly encourage all city residents to maintain working smoke detectors on each level of their home, in addition to in their sleeping areas, but equally important are carbon monoxide detectors. Carbon monoxide is an odorless, colorless gas that you will have no pre-warning that you are suffering the effects of. We also really appreciate our citizens who help us shovel our fire hydrants in the winter. We do live in New England and we get our fair share of snow, but when seconds count, we can't take that time to, to shovel out fire hydrants, so we really, really appreciate our citizens who help us out, either by marking them or at least by not piling snow on them. Not only as fire chief, but as a resident of Nashua, it is truly a privilege to live in such a community that values public safety and the work that its employees do every day to make Nashua a safe place for everyone. My name is Bobby Bagley, and I'm the director of the Division of Public Health and Community Services for the City of Nashua. Our mission at the Division of Public Health is to promote and protect the health of the public through leadership and collaboration. As the first and only accredited health department in the state of New Hampshire, our goal, as we envision it, is to make sure that we have an informed community that participates and is actively involved and engaged in the improvement of their health efforts. We envision a healthy and informed community through our programs and our prevention services. Working collaboratively with our city officials and partnering organizations, the City of Nashua's Health Department is committed to building our leadership capacity and will be doing so with our Public Health Advisory Council, as well as our internal senior leadership to be able to more strategically address major health issues that are impacting our city. Some of those health issues include the opioid crisis, where we've mounted responses to address prevention, treatment, and recovery efforts. Our role as strategic prevention strategists in public health will allow for us to develop a prevention framework that we will be able to use with our partners to address some of the emerging public health issues impacting our city, which include neonatal abstinence syndrome, as well as substance use disorder, chronic diseases, as well as infectious diseases that are increasing in our population in Nashua. We are positioning ourselves to strategically align our community health improvement plan initiatives with being able to address these goals and objectives. In this role as prevention strategists, the division will develop a prevention framework with our community partners to address the emerging public health issues impacting our community and the greater Nashua region. The creation of this strategic prevention framework will allow for us to continue to build upon our leadership in public health to continue to promote and protect and preserve the health of the community in the greater Nashua region. The overall goal of the staff at the Division of Public Health and Community Services and our Environmental Health Department, Community Health Department, and our Community Services and Welfare Department is to ensure a healthier Nashua through all of our initiatives and all of our programming. I'm Justin Cates and I'm the Director of Emergency Management for the City of Nashua. Nashua is lucky enough to have the only full-time Office of Emergency Management at the local level. And our focus is really to ensure the health, safety, and well-being of all of our citizens here within the city of Nashua. One of the things I would love to tell people about is where we came from in the Office of Emergency Management. Rather than focusing on man-made disasters, we're now looking at everything, including storms, including power outages, including cyber attacks, including terrorism, active shooters, and every other type of emergency that we might have here in this country. Now, one of the things that's important to know is how proactive 
active Nashua has been when it comes to preparing for any type of issue that might come up. And it's all because of the partnerships that we have here in the city. That includes partnerships such as the fire department, which has been a great organization for us to work with. The other thing I would say is our police department is also one of the accredited police departments here within the state of New Hampshire that also has a regional bomb team as well as a special reaction team to handle any type of emergency that might come up. We also need to think about our health. And so there are a number of health-related organizations that provide great services during a disaster. Those include things like our ambulance service, AMR, who is always there when we need them when it comes to emergency medical services within the community. When those ambulances take folks that have may, may have been injured during an emergency, they go to one of our two great hospitals, Southern New Hampshire Medical Center and St. Joseph Hospital. You also have to think about groups like Dartmouth-Hitchcock, which is a huge partner for the city of Nashville when it comes to how we prepare. Now, we also have a great division of public health and community services, which is always around the clock looking at ways that they can prepare for different types of health-related emergencies, pandemics or uh, terrorism that's related to health-type incidents. We use a program called the Local Emergency Planning Committee, which was established back in the 1980s as a way for us to bring all of the private sector, non-governmental organizations, and government agencies together to talk about emergency planning within the community. One of those great partners is the FAA Center here within the city. We also have plans for the airport if there was some sort of an emergency there as well. And those folks that would be there at the airport are always ready to go when there's some sort of an incident that might take place, working with our first responder agencies. The city of Nashua is a storm-ready community, and what that means is that we've met certain criteria to ensure that we're ready for all types of storms, including various thunderstorms, winter weather, anything like that. We need to make sure that we mention how important our fire department is and what kinds of standards and criteria that they meet when it comes to being prepared for fires, hazardous materials, and medical emergencies as, as well. It's important to talk about our volunteers within our community emergency response training. And those are folks that are from the city and even from the region that come to Nashua to learn about how they can be better prepared in the event of a, a disaster. Now schools are also an important thing for everybody and we always want to make sure that we tell folks about how important safety and security is at those facilities. But we work with private, public, and faith-based schools all across the city to ensure a level of standardization among emergency plans, security plans, and everything else that might take place. So it's really important for us all to work together in the event of an emergency. We all can't just rely on one certain department to save the day during some sort of a disaster. So it's essential that we get businesses, we also get nonprofits, we get government agencies together to talk about ways that we can resolve any sort of an emergency that would pop up here within the city of Nashua. It's important for citizens to also take part in this and find ways that they can be better prepared among themselves as well as their families by building emergency supply kits, by signing up for things like our Code Red system here in the city, and making sure that they have emergency plans. It's really essential that everybody takes a part when it comes to being a better prepared community here in Nashua. Hello, my name is Dr. Jamal Mosley. I'm the superintendent of the National Public Schools. Today I'd like to speak to you about the wonderful programming we offer here in the National Public Schools. We have so many different programming at our elementary schools, our middle school, and our high school. And our high schools are so unique that we also offer CTE programming, career technical education in both of our high schools. Let me talk to you a little bit about the benefits of coming and attending our public schools in Nashua. Number one, we have a variety of clubs and activities for all of our kids. Number two, our extracurricular activities are great. My bottom line for any student who wants to or is thinking about attending the Nashua public schools, you can get involved and be connected to our schools. We have committed administrators who have a variety of experiences in special education, English language learners, spe special education, uh, regular education, anything that you can imagine, we have it here. More importantly, we are a student-focused and centered public schools. We encourage students to strive for the stars, and we also love parent involvement. In the end, the National Public Schools is not just the public schools, it is a model for city schools. I hope that you think about us when you're thinking about making a selection to the public schools. I welcome all families 
from all walks of life to attend our public schools in Nashua. Please feel free to reach out to any administrator, including myself, to come to the Nashua Public Schools. We are Nashua. I'm Kathy Hirsch. I am the former Community Development Director for the City of Nashua. Rotary Common is a very important historical site for the City of Nashua. Years and years ago, it was really the cradle of our industrial growth with Salmon Brook running right next to that site. It was the home of the very first post office in the city, and it was the home of the International Paper Box Machine Company from 1903 till the 1970s. It's a very important site from the city of Nashua's perspective because of its location. It is right on Main Street and it really is part of the gateway or the entryway into our downtown. So it's important that we have a very positive look for the city of Nashua and that site in its abandoned state was not great for the city. In the 1980s, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation began planning for the expansion of the F.E. Everett Turnpike going through Nashua. As part of that, they needed to fill 24 acres of wetlands and needed to mitigate those 24 acres by acquiring property to create or, or protect wetlands that were already on those properties. So I was on the Conservation Commission at the time and it came to my attention that DOT had 24 acres they needed to compensate for, but they only had 10 acres identified. So I called the Department of Transportation and I asked to speak to the commissioner, who very graciously got on the phone with me and told me that he could not find any more property in the city of Nashua, so I offered the Conservation Commission's assistance. So between the Conservation Commission, the City Planning Department, and the Department of Transportation, we were able to identify a total of 48 acres of wetlands and uplands to compensate for that 24 acres of fill. A few years later, we got a call, again from the Department of Transportation, saying that one of those properties was not available, and did we have any of the properties that we were interested in. They had other properties they had identified, but they wanted to make sure they touched base with us. It's important to note that the reason that they called was because of the relationship that we built over the first time that they were looking for mitigation property. So we asked them to put 315 Main Street, now Rotary Common, on their list. So they put it on their list and it was site number 22 out of 22 sites. It was not a desirable site from their standpoint. It was an urban site. They would have much preferred to have bought a piece of property out in the southwest quadrant that already had wetlands on it. But we explained why this was an important site to the city of Nashua. And in the end, back to those relationships, they chose the site, of which is now Rotary Common. So we were very fortunate that DOT did that. And uh, it really just points up the importance of relationships. So fast forward, I become Community Development Director in 2001, and this site is still on my mind and important to me for our city. And so we, as planners, developed a plan for the site and went up and met with the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation and proposed a park at this site. So they were very responsive to that, and we began planning for that. Fortunately, the Rotary Club of Nashua was looking for a project to celebrate their 100 years of Rotary International. And um, so our site became one of the sites on their radar screen, and we were fortunate that they chose our site. So U.S. Congressman um, Charlie Bass also uh, was interested in this and was able to garner $250,000 of federal money towards this, and DOT put in the remainder of the funds towards the $600,000 budget. So we built the first phase of the park. Now, Nashua is an extraordinary place to live because of the energy, the enthusiasm, and the commitment of its residents. We did not have all the funds to finish the park. It created an opportunity for Ivan Donitz, Fred T. Boom, Yusef Abudi, and the Nashua International Sculpture Symposium Committee to add to this park to 
generate private funds to create important landmarks in our city. The labyrinth, the Holocaust Memorial, the gallery on the wall, and the sculptures that are at the park. So in 2009, the Sculpture Symposium placed all three sculptures that year at Rotary Common and an additional sculpture sponsored by Mary and Dr. Charlie Goyette was also added in recent years. So this grassroots effort is really the hallmark of our amazing city, Nashua, and that's what makes Rotary Common so special. Good afternoon, my name is Jack Tully. I'm a member of the Nashua Rotary Club and we're here today at the Rotary Common on Main Street in downtown Nashua. And I thought I'd share with the viewers a little history of how the, the Common came to be. Back in 1999, Rotary International was facing its 100th anniversary, which came to pass in 2005. And they instructed all of their 34,200 clubs worldwide to start a project that would pay tribute to Rotary and its ideals across the world. So my club here at Nashua started, a, a committee was formed, and we started looking at projects we could take, uh, undertake, and we decided that we'd take this piece of land, which was a blight and a terrible gateway to downtown Nashua at the time. The weeds were up to your neck. There were people, homeless people, regrettably living here. We found evidence of all sorts of drug abuse, needles, and, the thing, and things like that. This piece of real estate has great depth of history uh, to the organization and forming of the Nashua Village. Over time, we, uh, we got the, the, the site uh, cleaned up, uh, we planted trees, and eventually the uh, reflection garden and the uh, a labyrinth was constructed up in the back. That was a great undertaking by a lot of people here in Nashua to raise the money and to make it finally the beautiful uh, attraction that it is today. In 1998, over a vacation that I had with my family, a colleague of mine mentioned when I was in San Francisco that I had to go and walk the labyrinth. And I did. And at that point, I made a promise to myself. The experience was so filled with peace that I wanted to bring something like that back to a city that I loved, to Nashua, New Hampshire. The labyrinth that we chose was a short labyrinth. We did that because it was the most beautiful labyrinth with the rosette center. And it was determined that the best place for the labyrinth was at Rotary Common Park. Rotary Common Park was developed years ago with the help of the Rotarians to begin and to create a green space but in that space, it wasn't being utilized. So to put the home of the Reflection Garden and Labyrinth there was perfect. Why was it perfect? Because it was right next to the Adult Learning Center, who had little children, as well as people from all over the world coming to learn about our culture, our city, and to live in Nashua. In addition, it was next to Elm Street Middle School. Across the way was Hunt Community, Right near it was St. Joseph's Hospital. Right near it, Southern New Hampshire Medical Center. The tree streets, majority of areas of people that could utilize this. It was to be a home of a place where people could go in the times of chaos to have and to experience peace and tranquility. My name is Yusuf Aboudi and I'm uh, responsible for the art project on the wall that you see back here. Uh, we called it Gallery at the Wall. And the inception of Gallery at the Wall started with the idea of uh, Yvonne Donetz when she uh, was responsible for the creation of some of the uh, artwork here as well as the labyrinth and was involved in the, uh, the uh, revitalization of this park. Gallery at the Wall is an outdoor rotating gallery installed on a 180-foot wall that combines history and art. The wall is made up of two uh, segments, so to speak. Uh, the right side is approximately 95 feet in length and 7.5 to 8 feet in height. 
I dedicated this side to a rotating art gallery that contains 12 panels. Each panel is 5 feet in length and 3.5 feet in height. And currently they contain photographs I've taken from around Nashville. This portion of the gallery was designed to allow for other artists in the future to represent their view of Nashua, and that artwork will rotate every two years. The left side is somewhat more unique. The historical timeline is represented by five panels. Each is five feet in length and two feet in height, taking you from the days before colonial times to present-day Nashua. It includes some interesting trivia, such as Nashua was called Nashville at some point in time. So please come visit the gallery at the wall and enjoy where art meets history. Now I'm a uh, child Holocaust survivor. I knew the real Nazis. And as a child I had to hide. And I survived. And I met John Whiteman. And I said to John, John, how would you like to build something in New Hampshire that reminds us of the Holocaust as a permanent monument? And John was very receptive, immediately receptive. So when John came up with the scale model with the four walls, I said, let's make it six walls. And, and John was very receptive on that. And from that, evolved a full-scale model. Now we had to find a place. The uh, Rotary Common had just been unveiled. Yvonne Donalds had just placed the, uh, the reflection garden and labyrinth. It was a smaller section to the south of the uh, Summer Brook. And it was going to be developed into a small public park. And somebody brought up the idea, and this came through a contact that Nick Gaziano has in his office, who knew some people in Pan Am, Pan Am Airways. And they said, we will donate a rail track that goes from the parking area to the Central Monument. And today, in this Holocaust Memorial, you'll find about a 50 track actual railroad I still had a nagging feeling I needed something else. And then I saw a photograph of a little girl standing with a whole bunch of other young kids, mostly young kids. And the young kids, the other kids are staring at some horrible things happening in front of them, not looking at the photographer. But this child, a little girl in a white dress, is staring straight at the camera in a white dress, everyone else was dirty, black clothes, and she stood there in a nearly spotless white dress, looking at the camera with an expression that I cannot describe. But it's in the Auschwitz album. I'd never seen that picture before. And it suddenly hit me, that little girl is speaking to me and I have to build a sculpture that represents her. In a very short time, I was able to contact a local sculptor. His name is Joe Gray. He works in, uh, in uh, North New Hampshire. And he volunteered to build a sculpture. This is a five-ton piece of granite, solid five-ton, over 11,000 pounds. And within that granite, the sculpture this little girl. It's a facsimile of the little girl in a photograph. And above that is a description from Genesis that says, what have you done? What have you done when the voice of blood rises from the earth? The emphasis in this memorial, more than any other memorial I know of, and I've seen a number of memorials, it emphasizes small children and commemorates the small children that were killed by Nazis in World War II.
Hello everybody, my name is Judy Carlson and I'm a member of the National Arts Commission. We believe strongly that arts and culture is the heart and soul of any city and is part of having a healthy economy and important to economic development because nowadays people want to visit, they want to play, they want to work, and they want to live in a city that supports the arts. In Nashua, has the most vibrant art scene of any town in New Hampshire. Now that's a pretty big claim. So, you know, what do I have to say to back that up? Well, a lot. First of all, let's look at public art. Nashua is the only city in the United States to have an international sculpture symposium where artists from all over the world come to Nashua for three weeks and leave behind beautiful pieces of their work. We now have sculptures all across our city and City Arts National is really proud to be the fiscal sponsor for the symposium. If you look at murals, there is no city in New Hampshire that has more than we do. One is a huge mural by New Hampshire Artist Laureate James Aponovich depicting the Yankee Flyer Diner right across from City Hall. Another is a WPA mural right in City Hall on the third floor. And the third is a beautiful fresco mural in the 14 Court Street Theater by world-renowned mural artist Lucien Bloch. If you're really more interested in music, Nashua has an amazing array. We're home to Symphony New Hampshire, the oldest professional orchestra in the state. We have the Nashua Chamber Orchestra, the Nashua Flute Choir, the Community Concert Series, the Spartan Drum and Bugle Corps, which wins awards at the national level, the Monument Street Brass, and we have a really wonderful, thriving music scene at our bars and restaurants, headlined by Riverwalk Cafe and Music Bar. If theater is your passion, Nashua is a place to be. We're the home of Peacock Players, which is not just the state, but the area's leading youth theater. They traditionally sweep all the awards in their categories at the New Hampshire Theatre Awards ceremony every year. And the actor-singers have been producing award-winning musical theatre for 61 years here in Nashua. And the Nashua Theatre Guild does a wonderful job at comedy, drama, and leading-edge plays since 1961. If you love dance, well, we got a lot of that too, everything from ballet to hip hop. The Northern Ballet Theater Company and Granite State Ballet produce ballets every year, showcase performing arts. But of course, we also have to look at where's the art in Nashua? At 30 Temple Street, home of the Nashua Area Artists Association and their wonderful Art Hub Gallery, they have over 100 members that rotate their art through the gallery. Uh, R.J. Finley hosts different artists within the walls of their building and the lobby area. If you look up to Main Street, right on Main Street itself, we have a wonderful gallery and store for the New Hampshire League of Artists. And the National Public Library has art exhibitions on a regular basis as well as many programs. Nashua is also home to the National Community Music School, the Gate City Charter School for the Arts, North Main Music, and many of our arts organizations offer classes and workshops for students to help augment the wonderful arts programs we do have in the public school system. And the Mary Goyette Arts Awards uh, Luncheon, which honors people who support the arts as well as features local talent. The National Public Library has regular concert seasons on the plaza in front of the library. And of course, the season is capped by the annual Greeley Park Art Show, which the National Area Artists Association has been doing for many years. Art Walk is in every October, and it's Nashua's major arts festival, with over 100 artists displaying and selling their work, musical entertainment, all sorts of events for both kids and adults. Nashua ha does have so much to offer. And you can see why many people are now calling Nashua the Arts Hub of New Hampshire. Go to www.cityartsnashua.org and sign up for our newsletter where you'll find out what's happening every month. And of course, the Nashua Telegraph has the Encore section every Thursday. 
So now you know why we are so proud of Nashua and its art scene and love to say that here in Nashua, arts are everywhere. Hi, my name is Kathy Hirsch. I am the president of City Arts Nashua. City Arts Nashua is a nonprofit organization in the city of Nashua. We've been around for uh, 11 years and our role, our job, our mission is to promote arts in the city of Nashua. City Arts Nashua was formed back in 2005. So here are some of the programs that we do. Art Walk, of course, is our premier program. And most people, everybody hopefully, has have heard of Art Walk and have participated, have come to Art Walk. It's held in the fall. There are many artists, over 100 artists, who participate in Art Walk. We also have an Arts Awards Luncheon, which is held in the spring. And that is, the purpose of that is to celebrate art, certainly, and to uh, recognize certain people who are not artists, but who really make a difference in the arts community. The Mary Goyette Arts Awards Luncheon is the primary fundraiser for City Arts Nashua. One of the other programs that City Arts Nashua offers is fiscal sponsorship. So if there's an organization, for example, who is waiting to get their nonprofit status and they want to do a fundraiser, then we can fiscally sponsor that organization so that they uh, can still do their fundraising and it's uh, tax deductible. For example, we are fiscal sponsors for the Sculpture Symposium. The Sculpture Symposium is not a separate organization. That is an ad hoc group of people who have been together for a very long time putting on that symposium. When people make donations, they can make them through City Arts Nashua, and that way they can write them off on their taxes. I chose to be on City Arts Nashua's board of directors specifically because I could see the great potential that we have for advancing arts for ourselves and for our artists, but most importantly for our community. And that to me is the most important reason why we have artists and why we do what we do as City Arts Nashua. Hi, I'm Gail Moriarty and I co-chair the Nashua International Sculpture Symposium with Kathy Hirsch. Our Sculpture Symposium was created in 2008. We are very, very excited about this project. We have a wonderful committee. We have support from the City of Nashua, from City Arts Nashua. We have support from the Arts Commission, Nashua Arts Commission, and we have support from Andres Institute of Art. Our project is special because we are the only city in the country that hosts an international sculpture symposium every year, and we're very, very proud of it. We have over 30 sculptures in our city. Our symposium picks three sculptures every year, and we invite them to our city to create unique sculptures that are placed all around our city. We have an amazing, amazing group of volunteers. Our volunteers host our sculptures in their home, they bring them lunches, they bring them dinners, they stop by for visits, they bring them snacks. Uh, we find that people will come to the work site within the first few days because they're curious. And then as we come to work on the site, we'll see them come back day in, day out, day in, day out. And then they'll say, can we bring a meal? Can we come and see them? Um, can we host next year? They all come to the closing and we find that the entire city really surrounds and welcomes and um, enjoys our sculptures. We have a welcoming reception in May, and we invite the, the city to come to the welcoming reception. Um, and then we work on site six days a week at the work site. They have Sundays off. And at the end, we have a wonderful, wonderful party, and we drive around with the mayor and in the, um, the city buses, and we go to each of the sculptures, and we have our closing ceremonies. Um, these sculptures become like a second family to all of us. We talk about it all year long. We work on it all year long. Our sculpture map is on the city's website. If you wanted to go to the city's website and download the map, you can take an hour, day, week trips, and we have people that go around and take pictures of them or with all of our sculptures and send them to us. People have really come to love us and love our sculptures. Um, we find it, we think it's a very wonderful thing that the city has this resource. Uh, it's also wonderful to be out and around, and I'll see people around our sculptures. I'll be hiking, and they won't even know that I have any association, but we'll see them, and they'll take out their phones, and they'll, they'll take a picture of the QR code, and they'll look at the website, and they'll read about the sculptor. 
and then they'll come to see us and they'll say, hey, I, you know, I saw your website and I saw this sculptor from this country and um, are there more? And so we find that the city not only has welcomed us and has a great time with us, but they've also considered our sculptures theirs. So for that, we're thankful, we're grateful. Um, and we, are, we have over 30 sculptors in the city at the moment. Um, if you would like some more information, you're welcome to come to our website. Our symposium runs for the month of May every year. We are always welcoming new volunteers, uh, new support. We host the sculptors in our homes. We feed them two meals a day. We have a stipend that we pay the sculptors to come. We have to pay for some supplies, so we're always looking for donors. When you sponsor a sculpture, you are helping to support that sculptor in what they love to do, which is create public art for the city, for all the cities. Um, our internationally known sculptors that we choose come to our city every year and they're welcomed and they're enveloped by our city and everyone is so wonderful to them. We welcome all of you to come and join us every year. My name is Cecilia Ulibarri and I'm the president and co-founder of Positive Street Art. And my name is Manny Ramirez and I'm the VP of Creative Directions and co-founder of Positive Street Art. It is the mission of Positive Street Art to inspire a passion for urban arts and to build stronger communities through educational workshops, artistic services, and community events. My role with Positive Street Art is to oversee all the programs and the board directors for Positive Street Art. And my goal is to oversee the visual direction of Positive Street Art. So our programs range from dance workshops, uh, mural creations, uh, and whether it's indoors and outdoors and within the city of Nashua and outside of Nashua. Uh, but mostly in the city of Nashua. I think what sets us apart from other arts organizations um, in our community and out of our community is that we really focus on um, out-of-the-box um, um, urban art and out-of-the-box um, expressions. Dance, um, visual arts, spoken word, um, and music, whether it's performing arts, um, DJing, um, acoustic, um, singing, various types of music. The two main things that we usually were very proud of and um, that most people remember when you think of positive street art is our dance workshops and our dance um, performances and um, in terms of dance and our murals. So basically when you hear positive street art, oh they do beautiful murals downtown or the uh, another crowd that doesn't might not know about our murals, what, what they would say, you know, they do amazing performances and, and a lot of other events that happen, uh, happen in Nashua. So I think um, we've reached out to quite a bit of people um, through those two things, through those two avenues. We've uh, collaborated with uh, um, local organizations, after school programs, and have have taught kids um, uh, whether it's graffiti or just painting in general and then dance as well we still do that on a, on a weekly basis we have some murals um, located all around downtown nashua um, if you check out our website and um, we have them listed on there um, we do mural tours actually um, throughout the year so um, if you are interested in, in going to one of those you can go on our website to see when we have Basically, we welcome anyone who is willing to express themselves, whether it be visual art, whether it be music, whether it be dance. Um, we, we welcome anyone who has a passion for expression and creativity. What's really great and cool about our organization is that organically we have attracted so many different types of people, um, all different walks of life, whether it be the age range, um, whether it be their cultural background, um, whether it be their income status. We've had elected officials um, really backing us and supporting us. Um, so especially when we're at our events and we see uh, various types of people at our event. It, it truly warms our heart, heart to know that this is truly for everyone.
My name is Diana Hill. I am an active member of the Actor Singers in Nashua. To give you a little history of our organization, um, it started in 1955 with a man named Jim Wood, who was the organist at the Church of the Good Shepherd. In 1959, they had their first junior production, which was The Frog Prince. And then they went on in 1961. They finally adopted the name of the actor singers. They elected their first board of directors. They wrote their bylaws. So in 1976, the actor singers decided they needed their own space, so they purchased the St. Joseph School Annex on Lake Street, which uh, later became known as Actor Singers Hall, and that's the current location of the organization. Our group really does thrive on volunteers. We have over 200 active members, and of those members, 50 of them are life members, which means they have been active for 15 years or more. We really do encourage people who, who don't necessarily have a background in theater to get involved. We have things for all ages, starting approximately age nine, going up until 150, <laughs> however long you can keep with us. And um, yeah, we just have a lot of fun with what we do. It's really become a home away from home for theater enthusiasts who just want to share good theater with the community. And, and that's one thing that we pride ourselves on is being able to, to bring really high quality award winning performances at a, at a reasonable price that people can afford. But one thing that uh, I think is really important with our organization is that uh, theater Communities in general are a judgment-free zone for, for anyone who might have some social anxiety or just otherwise don't feel like they quite fit into society. So I think it's a real asset for the city of Nashua to have an organization like this for their community. So currently the Actor Singers produces five productions every year. We have two main stage productions that take place at the Keefe Auditorium in the spring and in the fall. And in addition to that, we have three smaller productions that take place at the Court Street Theater. We have the Junior Actor Singers production, which is usually done at the end of the winter. That's for ages approximately 9 to 14. We have the Teen Actor Singers production, which happens in the middle of the summer at the Court Street. And we also have a Fringe production that happens at the end of the summer. And the, the Fringe production has kind of become a way for individuals in our organization to maybe try roles that they haven't done in the past. So you'll see some actors and actresses maybe trying out a director position or a stage manager position. And you'll often find some of those people in the main stage productions who are in the ensemble might have a lead role in the fringe production. So that's been a, an interesting aspect to our productions. Uh, we have a website, www.actorsingers.org, and that has a plethora of information on upcoming events and how you can get involved, how you can buy tickets, and even how you can donate if you would like to help out our organization. But we really thrive on sharing the arts of theater to the, with the community, and I feel like that really contributes to the cultural richness of this city. Hi, my name's Mark Thayer. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I previously worked with the St. Louis Symphony and the New World Symphony in Miami. And I'm very excited to be here to work with this very historic orchestra. Symphony New Hampshire has been here in Nashua since 1923. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. It's a very historic orchestra, a real source of pride for people in New Hampshire. And now, sadly enough, it's the only professional orchestra left in New Hampshire. So we have to nurture and treasure this, this ensemble of musicians. Our mission is to be part of everyone's lives. We are very involved in educational work, but we want to be able to present all different types of great music to people in various ways. We try not to always be a, a formal event and we don't care what you wear. We want people to come and relax and have fun listening to music of all different kinds. We do a lot of new music and a lot of old music. We do a lot of American music and a lot of music from other countries. 
We're trying to do some world premieres every year by living composers. And we do some music that everyone knows and loves and recognizes from the past 400 years. So we try to be able to present something for everyone. We are working with more and more schools each year. It's very important for us to develop instrumental programs and teach various musical concepts for students because the arts develop a well-rounded student. The arts are a core subject and should be an important part of everyone's education. The arts develop confidence, creativity, self-discipline. They teach students to work as a team and to perform and to be proud of what they're doing. I really hope that the orchestra can continue to grow and be more and more active with different audiences. This year we're doing a lot of work with some of the retirement communities in our area. We're developing programs to work with the immigrant community as the, New Hampshire becomes a more and more diverse state. And we want our audiences to be as diverse and accessible to everyone as we possibly can. And we just want people to come, enjoy the music, learn a little bit, relax, bring their friends, and maybe hear something that they love or maybe hear something they've never heard before. It's important to us to be accessible and we're trying to change people's perception of what an orchestra does and who we work with. We want to be part of everyone's lives. We want to be an integral part of the community and we want to be available to everyone in different ways. So come check us out. In Nashua, our concerts are at the Keefe Center for the Arts and we are becoming more and more involved in neighboring communities and cities. So look at our website, symphonynh.org, and come have fun with us.